For the first 15 years, New Orleans High School sports, Warren Easton and Jesuit was the premier game. That all changed in 1921 when St. Aloysius formed its first football team. Then they came into the mix, and not to be outdone, the men's club at Holy Cross decided, well, if St. Aloysius is in it, we're going to be in it too. They raised $150 to hire their first coach. Things didn't go well for the new team. Uh, the fledglings were called the mix because of their Irish heritage. And uh, for the first three years, Jess would beat them by a combined score of 140 to nothing. That all changed in 1925 when Holy Cross got an influx of boarding students from Bay St. Louis area who were very talented athletes. Not only did Holy Cross hand Jesuit its first defeat of the young rivalry 45 to nothing, they tied perennial champion Warren Easton in the prep league during that year. Two significant things happened in 1937. The WPA built this 24,500 seat stadium, not exclusively, but mostly for high school sports. And secondly, it was a year the LHSAA uh, instituted a tiebreaker system where if a game was tied, the outcome would be decided by which team had more first downs. If that was tied, it would be which team had deep, more penetrations in the opponent's 20-yard line. And little did they know this rule would be tested right off the bat. A crowd of 9,000 fans sat in the rain through a thrilling football duel between Holy Cross and Jesuit at Loyola Stadium. They watched the two Catholic schools battle to a 6-6 tie. But while Holy Cross held Jesuit to even in points and first downs, the Blue Jays had three more penetrations. And according to the officials who were supposed to keep log of the penetrations and downs, Jesuit was the winner. Not so fast, said the Holy Cross coach. He approached the officials and yelling that they actually had one more first down than Jesuit. The referee wouldn't change his decision on that, and the Holy Cross took their case to the LHSAA. It took a few months to decide, but after coaches from both schools testified, the head official admitted that the two-man crew did not record downs and penetrations. The LHSAA had no recourse but to declare the game a no game. Let's move on to 1940. By 1929, Loyola had given up football. Tulane was really the only game in town as far as college football is concerned. On this cold November afternoon, Jesuit and Holy Cross battled before a crowd that was incredible. 34,345 crowded into the stadium. A thousand had to be turned away. They had to put up temporary bleachers in the end zone to accommodate the extra people. The game itself wasn't really a classic. Jesuit won the game rather easily, 25 to 7. But the significance of it was the crowd. In 1951, the rivalry took on an extra game. They actually had played twice that year. Holy Cross had uncovered a new star in Joe Delaney in that Sunday afternoon. They really rose to the occasion and defeated Jesuit 20 to 13. Previously unknown and unheard of, Delaney scored all three touchdowns. The victory made Holy Cross the only undefeated team in the state in Class AA. And they were just two games away from winning the third consecutive district championship and entering the playoffs with just Forche and Nichols left to play. But Nichols, playing the game of the year with a 3-5 and five record, upset the Tigers 25-6, to six, giving them the, their first loss. Jesuit also had just one loss, and at the end of the season, because the LHSAA took just one team from each area, the two had to play again. Holy Cross staged one of the greatest comebacks I've seen in high school football that year. Trailing 14-6 near the end of the third quarter, Holy Cross scored one touchdown before the period ended and came back and scored again with three minutes, 15 seconds remaining in the game to win 18-14. to 
and gain a berth in the South Louisiana playoffs. But with the teams having played twice in 1951, and all of a sudden in 1963, they have to do it again. But this time, the coaches are brothers-in-law. Jesuit lost the first two games and would lose a third to Redemptress, entering the final game of the regular season against the Tigers. The hard-fought defensive struggle before 20,000 people at City Park Stadium. Holy Cross defeated Jesuit 7 to nothing to win the Catholic League championship. Victory enabled the Tigers to finish a regular season campaign with an undefeated but once tied record. But Jesuit wasn't finished. This year, the LHSAA instituted a rule that allowed a second team from the same district to enter the playoffs. So a second game between Callbacker and Tarzetti's teams was for the state championship. Scheduled to be played at Tulane Stadium before a record crowd, the championship game was twice postponed by weather. The game finally took place on Tuesday night before an estimated crowd of 27,500 at Tulane Stadium. Once again, the two waged a war on the field with Holy Cross pulling out a 14-6 victory to gain its first state championship in 19 years. Glenn Smith and Ray Collada both scored touchdowns on one-yard runs. Collada's winning points came in the final period. Year 2000, the new millennium, Holy Cross and Jesuit played to a double overtime game with Holy Cross winning 48-45. Holy Cross survived a furious Jesuit rally in which the Blue Jays scored 35 points in the third period to pull out the win. The two most electrifying plays came back to back when the Tigers' Gino Jambaluka returned to kickoff 92 yards to open a 24-17 lead that was short-lived when Jesuit's Chris Marquet answered with a 96-yard kickoff return to tie the game again. 2005, Hurricane Katrina. The city was in shambles. Holy Cross's campus was devastated. Jesuit's basement and first floor was flooded. And the 86th meeting between the two teams appeared to be doomed. The two former Holy Cross Tigers, Vic Umont and Barry Wilson, decided that in the face of this disaster, it was time for the city to find some normalcy. Wilson, now head coach at Holy Cross, phoned his friend and now Jesuit head man, Umont, who was living with his daughter in Los Angeles, called to propose a game between the two teams. We can't let this rivalry die, he told him. Umont returned to the city, rounded up displaced players and enough equipment to fill a team for a game. Wilson gathered the remnants of his remaining players and the game was arranged at Yenny Stadium on a Saturday afternoon on October 22nd, just 53 days after the storm. A reserve running back named Cass Hargis found out he would start on the day of the game after just one week of practice. Normally a wide receiver, Hargis ran for 128 yards and scored three touchdowns as the Tigers beat the Jays 20 to 10. But thanks to the determination of the two coaches and with the help of other schools who were not affected by the storm, the game was played and history was preserved. 